What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and today we have the complete Vault of Glass updated raid guide, showcasing every encounter, every chest, and every challenge mode to let you know absolutely everything for what to do in the new 390 light Vault of Glass raid. Guys, this video was a ton of work to put together, so if you find it helpful, please remember to help me out as well by liking and especially sharing. So, without further ado, let's get started on this guide. Now the first encounter to open the entrance to the Vault of Glass takes place actually in a patrol area on Venus, so you will see random players run by. Fun tip for you guys, you can actually load up the Vault of Glass and then just leave and go to the other areas of Venus and do patrol mode stuff and public events with a six man fire team which is kind of fun. But back to the Vault of Glass. Opening this entrance is actually relatively simple. There's going to be three areas in the middle off to the right and off to the left. Each one of these areas has a circular plate that when you stand on it will generate a vex glowing wall around it. Now this glowing wall is how you charge up the spire and eventually how you open the door. You have to keep this plate and this wall open. Now the only thing that can close it is the Praetorians. If the Praetorian Minotaurs get within these plates, they step on it, it will go back to zero and then you're going to have to get your teammates or yourself to stand on these plates and to open them back up again so you can start building the spire again. Once these three plates have been going for a long enough time, the spire will construct itself and open the entrance to the Vault of Glass, and then simply head in. Once you do head in, follow the main path you kind of see me follow, and you will encounter your first chest. Now from here, you can deviate to the left and very simply go to the next encounter. However, there has been a new chest added if you deviate to the right. As you can see, me go here. You jump off the ledge, but then eke your way into this little underground entrance, follow the route you see me follow, and that will eventually lead you to another chest. This chest is worth getting because it does give you a legendary engram. Now once you grab the chest, follow the route that again you see me take and eventually end up at the next big encounter. This arena that you end up in is going to be your home for the next, well honestly, three encounters, so it's going to be a common sight. Now the first encounter you're going to have to deal with is defending the confluxes. Once your team jumps down to this main area, it's going to initiate this encounter. There's going to be one conflux that spawns in the very center of this area and to the back. You simply need to kill Vex before they get to this area. If they do get right next to the conflux, they're going to sacrifice themselves. You can deal with a few sacrifices, but if too many Vex sacrifice themselves to the conflux, you will lose this encounter. Your team will automatically wipe. And you're going to have to do this several more times, so it's best to just try to prevent as many Vex, all if possible, from sacrificing themselves. Now apart from the normal Vex that we've all seen many times, goblins, hobgoblins, minotaurs, there's also going to be a new type of Vex called fanatics. These are glowing green and if you kill them, they will leave a green goop where they died. Do not go into the green goop because if you do, you are liable to die. The Templar in the middle, which is just sitting there, he will shoot at you, but you can't possibly damage him. He will do a Ritual of Negation. If uh, this Ritual of Negation comes up and you are affected by the green goop, you'll die. So if you do step into this green goop, which again, avoid at all costs, but if you do step into it, you can jump down to the glowing platform in the very center of the map. Jump in here and you will cleanse yourself and then you will be okay. If the Ritual of Negation comes up, you will be fine. After defending the Conflux for a long enough time, you will see the text appear, The Templar Summons Its Legions. 
This means that there are going to be a crap ton of fanatics that spawn in the very center of the map. You're going to want to move your team relatively close to the center of the map and then bring out all the stops. Pop your supers, you know, offensive supers like hammers, like stormcaller, those are excellent for this part. And also, rocket launchers are fantastic, machine guns are decent, just kill these fanatics as quickly as possible. Because if you can use rocket launchers, if you can use supers and kill them while they're spawning down in this lower area of this arena, you can simply get all the green goop down there and it will be fine. But if you let them bleed upwards, if you let them get too close to you, it can cause some problems because the whole negation mechanic will still be going on, and this time with 10 times the normal fanatics. You will also have to deal with some Axis Harpies that spawn as well. They can be pretty annoying, so make sure you don't get overwhelmed by them as well. That's really it for the mechanics of this first encounter. The only thing is that you're going to have to do this two more times. The next time, Confluxes are going to spawn. Instead of spawning in the middle, one is going to spawn on the right side and one is going to spawn on the left side. And then you're going to do those same things again. You're going to kill Vex. The Templar will summon his legions. And then after that, there's going to be three Confluxes that spawn on the right in the middle as it did the first time and on the left. So the best way to overcome this encounter is to simply split your team up two, two, and two covering the right side, the middle, and the left side and then simply keep doing that three times in a row. Although yes if you are on the left side and there's only a conflux in the middle it could seem useless, however, tons of enemies are spawning on the left that are eventually trying to make their way to the middle, so you can just kill these enemies and it will still very much help your team. So, split your team up 2-2-2 two, two, and, two, and just keep doing that three times in a row. Now moving on from there, we have the Oracle's Encounter. There's going to be essentially orbs of light that spawn in several predetermined locations and you have to kill these Oracle's Orbs of Light as quickly as possible. Failure to kill one of them will mark your entire team, which makes you liable to wipe, so you definitely don't want that. Remember that Vault of Glass weapons come with the Oracle Disruptor perk intrinsically in them. So if you have one from the previous encounter or from another time you try to do Vault of Glass, definitely this is the time to put them on. Especially the primary weapons with Oracle Disruptor are incredibly, incredibly useful. Now again, like I alluded to earlier, the oracles spawn in predetermined spots. What I'm showing you right now in the background is every single spawn, like where I shoot on the ground, where my teammates are standing, we're all shooting, is every single spawn the oracles can appear at. So pay attention to this part, rewind it if you have to, whatever you need to do, but these are going to be the places oracles spawn. They spawn nowhere else than these places I'm showing you. So as long as you have teammates throughout this arena that are in positions to see all of these oracle spawns, not all at the same time, but a couple of people to the right, a couple of people to the left, a few in the middle, just an, in enough locations that they can see oracles when they spawn, no matter where they spawn, and take them down when they do, you really should be fine because that's all this encounter really is taking down those oracles when they spawn and then dealing with the honestly relatively low number of ads that try to prevent you from doing that. The one type of ad you will have to worry about is the hobgoblins that spawn on the outside of the map. They're going to be sniping you and they're going to be very annoying. You're going to need to make sure that you take down these hobgoblins when you see them. You definitely don't want to have all of the hobgoblins alive and well when you're trying to do an oracle round because that spells trouble. So when you see one shoot at you, turn around, pull out a sniper and shoot right back or a scout rifle or whatever, just kill them before they inevitably kill you. Now if you do miss an oracle and your team gets marked for negation, you're going to have to all jump down to that glowing part in the center of the map to cleanse yourselves. 
But that's really all there is to this encounter. Being on top of those oracle spawns, killing adds when you can so they don't, you know, kill you as you're paying attention to the oracles, and then when the oracles are spawning, paying, you know, very good attention to those oracles and killing them as quickly as possible. Now moving on, we have the Templar Encounter, and we also have our first challenge mode. However, the interesting part about this is that doing the challenge mode is actually easier than doing it the normal way. Honestly, it is, especially with the particular strategies that I'm going to show you guys for how to beat the Templar and challenge mode. So, the Templar is going to spawn when you grab the relic that has now spawned in the middle of the map. Now, once you pick up the relic, the relic holder will have several new relic abilities. Pressing the shoot button will make you slam the ground and you can jump into the air, press the shoot button and you'll slam down on the ground. That does great damage against adds. You can also just press the normal melee button to do a normal a swinging attack as if you had a sword. You can also press the grenade button to make a shield around you. This is incredibly important. And when your super is fully charged, you can press your super buttons to activate that and you will shoot a projectile in whatever direction you are facing. You're actually going to have to shoot a projectile to really start this encounter, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Now once you pick up that relic, the Templar will move to the very center of the map. And once he does this, there's also going to be oracles that spawn. However, the oracles will be red, and that means they don't just simply mark you for negation. They wipe your entire team, you succumb to the oracles if you don't kill them. So make sure that your team is able to kill every single one of these oracles. So when the Templar moves to the middle, four oracles will spawn. Kill all four of these oracles as quickly as you can. Again, failure to do so will cause your entire team to wipe. Now once you kill these four oracles, your entire team except for the relic holder wants to move to the back of the map as you can see in the background gameplay. Now once you're at the back of the map, the ads won't really bother you. They're just going to stick around the right and the left side. So once the oracles are dead and your team is in position, the relic holder is going to use his super ability and shoot the Templar shields. This is going to take those shields down and make the Templar actually able to damage. The rest of your five team members in the back are simply going to go to town. Sniper rifles, tether, weapons of light, uh, the sleeper simulant, the galahorn, tons of high damage dealing weapons are the best for this engagement. Now once you take down the Templar shields, there is going to be a new mechanic that pops up. He's going to teleport. Now if he does teleport, he's going to move to a new location, he's going to regain his shields, and most importantly, more oracles will spawn. And because they're the terrible red type of oracles, you're going to generally want to avoid this. If you can prevent him from teleporting, that just makes things honestly so much easier. However, the challenge mode is actually just to prevent him from teleporting. So you might as well knock off two birds with one stone here and do the challenge mode so you can get the rewards if it's active and also do it because it's the easiest method. Even if it's not the challenge mode, it's much easier than letting him teleport and having to deal with his oracles over and over and over again. Now, you can actually tell where he's going to teleport because you can see a large glowing pillar of light shooting into the sky. This is going to be where he's trying to teleport. All you need to do to prevent him from teleporting is get one teammate to stand in this red circle essentially and as long as someone is there when the Templar tries to teleport he won't be able to and that's all you need to do. So simply stand inside this red circle when he's trying to teleport and that prevents him from teleporting. So back to the strategy, with your entire five-man team to the back and shooting the crap out of the Templar as soon as your relic holder takes down his shields, it's up to your relic holder to simply travel between the two teleportation spots and yes, there is only two teleportation spots, one on the right and one on the left. 
I do believe this is the easiest strategy. Simply have the Relic Holder go back and forth, have your team damage the crap out of the Templar. You can kill the Templar in two minutes or less. There is another strategy where your team is off to the right. The Relic Holder just simply stands and crouches on that left platform. If you're on the very edge of the right of the circle on that left platform and you're crouching, you can't be damaged by anything, but that strategy does put every other fire team member near the right teleportation zone and they're going to have to deal with ads the entire encounter. This strategy, the one I'm showing you, really no one has to deal with ads. You simply need to have one person who has their crap together, the relic holder, and everyone else just shoots the boss. That's all there is to it. Now the trick to this strategy is to have your relic holder go around. Go the long way between the teleportation locations. This may sound counterintuitive, but you actually want to arrive at the place where he's going to teleport kind of in the last few seconds. And that's because you arrive there, you stay there for only a few seconds, you can use your shield to prevent all incoming damage if you need to, and then he's going to fail his teleport and go back to dirtling in the middle. If you arrive too early, for example, if you are preventing the teleportation on the left side, and then you immediately go to the right side, you're going to again arrive too early and if you are there, he's going to start shooting at you. All the adds are going to start shooting at you. Yes, you can put up that shield to prevent all incoming damage, but the shield only lasts so long and it will actually go away and you're going to have all of the adds shooting at you and the boss at the same time and you're going to be melted almost instantly. So again, if you're on that left side, as you can see in the background gameplay, actually go around Meet up with your team in the middle, maybe even collect some orbs while you're there, especially if they're using weapons of light bubbles, and then go to the right side. Make your way around when you're moving between those teleportation locations. Because again, that's going to let you arrive at the teleportation site when it's a few seconds away from finishing. You can use your bubble if you need to, but you're not in danger of your bubble not lasting long enough and you getting destroyed by the ads. Now once you defeat the Templar, enjoy your loot and challenge mode loot, and then you're simply going to have access to another chest. There is a Spirit Bloom chest up here as you can see me go. Uh, if you don't need one thing of Spirit Bloom, you don't need to go there. Now there is also a cavern. It leads down to this crazy winding area that you can eventually make your way through this cave essentially, and you will find another kind of chest location. The weird part is that it seems that if you do the Templar challenge, there actually is no chest that normally spawns here. So it's probably not worth going this way. You likely just want to go through the main entrance that has just opened up and then make your way down to the Gorgon's Maze. And when you do go down here, make your way to the left before starting with the maze, hop up these rocks, enter this cave, and continue the way you see me towards yet another vault of glass chest. And we have another one right after that. Once you've gotten this one, head back to the starting area of the Gorgon's Maze, and instead of continuing with it, head off to the right. If you travel the same way you see me travel, and you know, give or take a few seconds waiting for the Gorgons to scoot by, you will find yet another Vault of Glass chest. This one is actually an exotic chest. I've seen several people get exotics from this. Alright, now once you've gotten those two chests, it's time to actually do the Gorgon's Maze. Starting from the very beginning, I'm going to show you exactly the best route to travel. I don't care what anyone says, this is the best route to travel because it's practically foolproof. Remember that when you're walking and when you're normally jumping, everything is fine. But as soon as you double jump, as soon as you run, as soon as you use an ability, the Gorgons will be notified to your presence. If you get too 
close, the Gorgon will spy its prey, and you either need to kill that Gorgon extremely quickly, they have a lot of health, but if you do, you will be able to maybe overcome that site, but if you don't, your entire team will wipe, so it's best to just follow the route I'm showing you and avoid them. Now my route basically breaks down to get on top of this rock, then double jump your way onto another rock and then another rock, and you're high enough that they can't actually see you, and then once your entire team gets to this final rock, simply wait for the Gorgons to move out of the way and walk down to the exit. Simple as that. Now continue your way through the Vault of Glass and you're going to find a jumping puzzle that no one actually does. Simply jump on one of these platforms and then make your way for the ledge on the far side of the wall as you can see me do here. And again, that's what literally everyone does. Once you hop down here, follow the ledge and that's about it. There is one part of the ledge that will trick you. If you walk across it, it will instantly make you fall off and die. So jump out and around this area as you can see me do. And aside from that, you'll simply hop off this ledge and continue to the next encounter. We then have the Gatekeeper Encounter. This has you kill several gatekeepers. The first one is going to be right in front of you when the door is open. But once you damage this gatekeeper a certain amount, he will start teleporting around the map. Every time you damage him, he will teleport again. So use powerful weapons, sleeper simulants, sniper rifles when you can against this guy, and simply figure out where he's teleported to and take him down as quickly as possible. There will be several yellow health goblins goblins and hobgoblins in this encounter as well, so make sure you're on top of those too. But essentially, once you kill that first gatekeeper, you're going to have access to opening the portals on the right and left side. The left portal will open up the desert area. The right portal will open up the jungle area. Now once you open these portals, so let's say your team splits up into three and three, with three going right and three going left, which is what you should do. One person needs to always be holding open the portal, and he can easily do that by simply hopping on top of the giant rectangle jutting out from the center of these portal openers. Now once the portal is open, the other two people of your three-man team are going to go inside this area. So they're going to go through the portal to Mars or Venus, jungle or desert. Once inside, as you can see, all you need to do is kill the Hydra Gatekeeper. Once you kill this Hydra inside the portal, there's going to be another relic that spawns off to the back. Grab this relic and run back outside of the portal, which again is being held open by your other fire team member outside. Now once you travel through these portals, you're going to encounter the effect marked by the void. What this does is it makes your screen get blacker and blacker and blacker until you quite literally can't even see. Now you can get rid of this debuff by entering the shield made by the relic, by cleansing yourself via the relic shield. So if you pick up the relic, you can cleanse yourself, but make sure you also cleanse any teammates that went inside the portal with you. And this same mechanic will come up in the last Atheon encounter as well. So once two teammates on the right and two teammates on the left have gone inside, killed their Hydras, grabbed the relics, made their way outside, cleansed themselves, you're now going to have two people with the relic. And actually, three people with the relic, and that's because there's actually a relic that drops when you kill that first gatekeeper. Now a lot of people I saw saying they had no idea what this relic does, well it's pretty simple. One of the new mechanics with the updated Vault of Glass raid is that you start to get marked by the void as soon as you enter in the portal. Previously, it started when you killed the actual Gatekeeper Hydra. So that third person with the relic, that person can pick it up instantly if they want and just go where they're needed to help out with the Gatekeepers. But you can also just leave the relic there and just use your weapons to deal with the Gatekeepers faster. But in any event, you're going to have, by the time you get the two relics on the right or left portal, 
anywhere from two to three relic holders. You really only need two, but you can also have three. The relic holders simply go to town on the minotaurs. There's going to be a lot of minotaurs spawning, either coming out of the portals on the right or left side and heading for a giant conflux in the middle. You're going to try to kill them before they get to this conflux, or also spawning at the top of the staircase in the middle of the map. Now, if you are a relic holder, it is very easy, as you can see, to take down these minotaurs. If you're not, use your guns and it's really not that hard as well. Defend the conflux from the minotaurs for a certain period of time, honestly it's not even that long, and then you will defeat this encounter and get some rewards. And that instantly leads into Atheon. There is nothing you can do to start this encounter, it automatically starts. So, get ready, we have the last Vault of Glass encounter. Now for this encounter, you're going to want to immediately split your team up 3 and 3, with 3 people holding open the right portal and 3 people holding open the left portal. After a certain amount of time of holding these portals open or just standing near them, Atheon will teleport 3 people at random. At this point, you need to figure out where they teleported to. So the old school way was to, if you got teleported, shout out, I'm in desert or I'm in jungle, and then you know if they're in desert, you go to the left side, if they're in jungle, you go to the right side. But the much easier and much more woke way to actually figure out where they are is to look at your minimap. Your teammates are still in this encounter, and so they still appear on your radar. So you can actually see them appear way to the right or way to the left on your radar. So once they teleport, look to your radar. If you see a bunch of green triangles off to the right side, that means they're in the jungle and you simply go to the right portal. If you see them off to the left side, that means they're on the left side. You simply go to that left portal. It's actually pretty simple. So the three teammates who didn't get teleported make their way to the correct portal as quickly as possible and hold it open. While they're holding it open, there's going to be constantly spawning supplicants. These are harpies that are more annoying than normal harpies because they explode when they get near you. So have your people holding open the portals stand on these rectangular pillars in the middle because the harpies can't get you from this position and then simply kill them while they're grouping up down below you. You definitely don't want to let them spawn and let them stay around because as your teammates are coming out of the portal, they can trigger and explode and cause a bunch of wipes. So kill them as quickly as you can if you're holding open the portal, but again, just stand on that pillar to avoid them. Now as for the people who got teleported, they're going to encounter a bunch of oracles that they need to kill, and it's the red oracles, so if you don't kill all of them, your team will wipe. You're also going to have a couple of adds that are there, and a relic that one person is going to pick up to help kill those adds. So, you teleport in. One person, who hopefully someone will call it out, will pick up the relic and then run forward and deal with the adds that have spawned. If you teleport to the desert, there's going to be three yellow health hobgoblins you're going to have to deal with. Run down the stairs, don't jump so that they all lock onto you, but run down those stairs, get pretty close, and then do a quick jump and slam, and you'll kill, hopefully, two of them, and then quickly finish off the third with the relic. If you're on the jungle, get your teammates to throw their grenades first, to just simply distract the enemies and prevent them from teleporting, and then your relic holder goes down and hopefully slams, especially the minotaur, and then deals with the two goblins after that. Now the other two teammates are simply going to get to work taking down the oracles. Again, primaries or even secondaries, like I was using the Vault of Glass snipe rifle, that have that oracle disruptor perk to take down the oracles faster are incredibly useful. But that's really all you need to do. The three people that get teleported in, one person grabs the relic to deal with the adds, the other two people start killing oracles as soon as they can, once you kill all of those oracles, and by the way, you are going to be marked by the void, so your screen is going to get blacker and blacker and blacker, but the one relic holder that got teleported in with you is going to cleanse the two shooters. Those three people take care of the oracles. Once they're all dead, they simply head back outside the portal, which is being held open by your outside team, and you're going to encounter a new mechanic called the Guardians Make Their Own Fate, 
which causes time's vengeance for 30 seconds. Once you make your way outside the portal, all six fire team members hop on this very center platform. From here, the relic holder simply holds open the shield. This is the one time throughout the entire Vault of Glass where the shield won't go away. As long as Time's Vengeance is up, the relic holder can hold open that shield. Every other person in that fire team stays within this relic shield because that means they're impervious to damage from Atheon shooting you and absolutely goes to town on Atheon's crit which is right in front of you. Sleeper simulants are excellent. Sniper rifles are excellent. What's not excellent actually is supers. The funny part is that you will actually consistently charge your super. A lot of people think that if you have a Celestial Nighthawk for example, you can just constantly shoot Atheon over and over and over again, but quite frankly this isn't that good. It has about 130 damage, but a sleeper simulant with weapons of light and tether can do 300,000 damage. So please stop this argument, use weapons, it's just better in terms of mathematics for DPS. If you don't have the sleeper and you have no good weapons, yes it may be better to use your super, but for 99% of cases, a powerful sniper rifle or a powerful heavy is going to be better. However, rocket launchers, uh, they will just explode actually when they hit the relic barrier, so make sure you either jump outside the relic barrier, like jump above it and then shoot your rocket launcher, or just don't shoot rocket launchers. Now as I alluded to earlier, supers that increase damage are very useful. So one, if you can pop a bubble with weapons of light near the back of this platform and then your entire team can just walk backwards, get the weapons of light bonus and then walk forward into the uh, relic bubble and then just damage Atheon, that's fantastic. Also, a tether is very, very useful, and remember your tether consistently charges, so tether Atheon in the middle, and then as soon as that tether goes down, jump up and tether him again. You can get three tethers in easily and just consistently keep up that tether damage. So damage increasing supers combined with extremely powerful weapons are the best for this encounter. However, my one major tip for you guys is don't get greedy because once time's vengeance is eaten up the relic holder will lose the ability to hold open the shield and atheon will start shooting you while well, he'll be shooting you so he'll be able to damage you and it does a lot of damage and then people are going to get teleported and it's going to be chaos so don't try to get those last few seconds of damage unless it looks like you're about to kill him and then maybe keep damaging him. But for most teams, when it gets to around the five second mark, start counting down five, four, three, and then around, you know, four, three seconds, your team is actually going to want to peel off, jump away from the middle platform so you have a couple of seconds of leeway, get in position next to the portals, and then simply wait to be teleported and do the same thing again. So don't get greedy, don't wait to the last second because that's how your teammates die and then you're gonna have to wipe, which is probably more problematic than just, you know, losing in on three seconds worth of times vengeance damage to ensure that you have a smooth transition. Now as for the challenge mode, instead of the three people that get teleported killing all of the oracles, each person is going to have to kill an oracle individually, so one person cannot kill two oracles. So what you're going to need to do for this is pretty much the same thing up until people get teleported and you open the portal. So, the three people that are holding open the portal for the people who got teleported, two of them are then going to go inside the portal and meet the two people who got teleported in there and help them kill oracles. You only need one person to hold open this portal. And again, that one person can just stand on that giant pillar and be pretty much impervious to all incoming damage. Now, if you are that one person holding it open, as I said earlier, be sure to kill those supplicants so that they don't build up and kill your entire team when they come out of the portal. But again, for clarity's sake, Three people get teleported in, the other three hold open the portal, once the portal is open, two of those people head on inside, one person stays out to keep the portal open, and then you kill five oracles. Make sure to communicate, call out, I've got this one, or I've got first oracle, or if I've got second oracle, I've got third oracle, whatever. 
Also, the Relic Holder will have to kill an Oracle. The easiest way to do that is to use the Super Ability to shoot a projectile at one of the Oracles. It instantly kills the Oracle as soon as it hits it. So, the first three people that get teleported in are probably going to be the first three people to kill the first three Oracles. The two people that wander in after are going to communicate with them, find out which Oracles they need to kill. But importantly, once you kill an Oracle, you're not really needed there anymore. You simply head on out. Go outside the portal, meet the guy holding open uh, the portal outside, and then simply switch with him. He's gonna go inside and be the last person to kill the last oracle, and that should be one person kills one oracle each, and then that's gonna trigger Time's Vengeance while also accomplishing the challenge mode. Now the one other piece of advice is that if you are the Relic Holder, try to make sure you cleanse people before they head out of the portal. You're likely still going to have some people marked by the void when they're outside, but things will go quickly enough that you shouldn't be completely blackened out when you're out here. And if you do have a little bit of marked of the void waiting, your screen is getting a little bit dark, and you're triggering Time's Vengeance, simply just go to the middle platform. The Relic Holder is going to be heading there anyways to pop his shield, and you can just wait for that to happen, walk into the shield, and get cleansed. With that being said, if you are the Relic Holder, aside from killing your one Oracle, your only job is to try to just go around and cleanse people when you can. Make sure people are not getting too marked by the Void. And guys, that should be it for how to beat Atheon both on normal mode and for the challenge mode. The normal mode is definitely easier, so if there's no challenge currently active, I would definitely just recommend doing it the normal method. However, the challenge mode, the most difficult part is simply getting down the timing, getting down the rotation, and getting down the communication. If your team can do it, and it probably will take a few deaths for you to get used to it, but once you can do that and consistently trigger Time's Vengeance, the rest is pretty simple. And so guys, that is it for the complete Vault of Glass guide. Every encounter, every chest, every challenge mode. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. Now if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. And if you actually want to be notified of new uploads, be sure to press the bell beside subscribe. Now if you want to support the channel, check out my official merchandise linked in the description down below. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at RickKakis. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. And yes, we do do Vault of Glass and other raid carries on Twitch. So if you need a team... You can do it with me if you show up and get selected. Guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a good day.